Okay, so welcome back. This is part two in our series where we're going to explain to you in depth and in detail uh, about the world of 3D computer graphics. And we're going to use this wonderful and amazingly powerful free software called Blender. So I encourage you to take a look at part one where we show you uh, what Blender is and how to download it and install it. Again, it's free. It's absolutely wonderful. It's got some many professional features that the pros use. And we also talk about what is a 3D object. And we try to give you some insight into what you're actually doing here. And it will really help you in understanding what's going on rather than like most YouTube videos, just press this button and press this button and you're an expert. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna talk about the configuration and setup of Blender and also how to navigate around Blender, how to move around the scene. And then in the next videos, we're going to talk about actually building objects. And you see here, I've got an object I built, a Star Wars fighter, a very simple object. You can do this um, fairly easily, um, but you just need to know the tools and the techniques and, and how to get around um, the scenes and everything else. So I encourage you to um, check part one. And in this video, we're going to go into some very important stuff about how to get around your scene and navigate. Okay, so here we are in what's called the default scene of Blender. So when you download and install Blender, and we're in Blender 3.0, when you download, install, and start it up, you're going to get this. And as we talked about before, it's basically a 3D view of your scene. It's called the layout. And inside this scene, we've got our light, which I can left click and select it. And I've got my cube object. And I've got a camera over here. So there's three components we talked about previously. And what we're going to do is we're going to first start out by showing you a few very simple setup things in Blender that will help make your life a lot easier, hopefully. And then after we get those basic setups, we're going to show you how to navigate around this scene so you can modify these objects the way you want them. You can customize them and we'll show you how to move around and we'll show you about the coordinate system. And after that, we are going to start by building a very simple object. And the object we're gonna build is a simple flashlight. And that will give us an opportunity to talk about how to generate simple objects. Uh, we're gonna be able, to, this is generating lights. So we're gonna be able to talk about how you make lights and different surfaces, materials. So um, the first thing we wanna talk about is the basic setup stuff. If we're going to start building objects, one very, very important thing you need to tell Blender is the dimensions of the object, right? In feet or meters or millimeters or whatever, you're going to have to tell what the dimensions are of each part of the object so that Blender knows, like we talked about before, where to put the vertices. Now, um, one other thing you need to keep in mind, the human brain is really, really, really good at knowing what looks right and what looks wrong in terms of proportions of an object. So for example, if we had a car and the wheel diameters were only like one foot, then your, eye, your brain would look at that and say, wait a minute, something doesn't look right. So it's really, really important that you figure out the dimensions of the object you're trying to create and tell that to Blender. Now, some of us like to work in meters, others like to work in feet. So what we wanna do is we wanna tell Blender what um, system we're gonna be entering our measurements in. So to do that, you go over here to this list of um, icons and you can ignore 90% of this stuff right now. We just want to go down to the one, two, three, four, five icon. It's got this little cone here. And if you hover over, it says scene properties. So click on the scene properties and you can see right here, we've got units. And here you can tell it what system you want to use. I'm going to put in Imperial here in the US. And it now says, okay, all of the measurements I'm going to put in are going to be feet. Rotation is going to be degrees or radians, whatever you want. But the flashlight we're going to develop, we're going to use inches because it's a small it's a small object. We don't need feet. And as you can see, we talked about in the previous video, if I click on this object, I can find out what its dimensions are by going up here and in this little arrow, click on it, and it will tell you for this item, you've got this items tab, What's the location? And it's 000 at the origin. What's the rotation? 000. What's the scale? 
And what's the dimensions? And you can see the dimensions are 78.7 .7 inches. All right, so now we've told it we can put in the correct dimensions here, uh, but it will now be in inches. So now that we know what dimensions, we also want to set up something that will make it a lot easier to move, rotate, and scale your object. I want to go up here to the top right corner with this little icon here where it says Gizmos, if you hover over it. Hit the down arrow and Object Gizmos. None of these are checked, the Move, Rotate, and Scale. You need to check each one of those. As you can see, what it does is it puts Gizmos on the object. Like if I select the camera, it puts Gizmo. If I put, select the light, it puts a Gizmo and the object itself. Now, what does the Gizmo do? Well, it allows you to move, rotate, and scale the object. So you don't need to use keyboard shortcuts. You can see, it's, you, if you click on the arrow, you can move it. If you click on this arrow, you can move it. If you click on this cube, you can scale it. If you click on these circles, you can rotate. Now, how do we navigate around this 3D view, this layout? For navigation, your mouse is going to be very, very important. And I very much encourage you to get a mouse not use a trackpad or anything. You can get around it, but um, it's so much easier if you use a mouse. And your middle mouse button, your scroll wheel, is going to be very, very important for navigation. Let's say I select my object and I want to rotate my view around that object. So I click on it and you can see we've selected it. And if I click down on the scroll wheel or the middle mouse button, and hold that down and move my mouse, it will rotate about the object. If I select this camera and rotate, you can see it's still rotating around this object. We don't want that. So what we want to do is make a couple more changes in our preferences. So we're going to go up to Edit, Preferences, and in the Navigation tab down here, click on Navigation, and we want to go up here and select Orbit Around Selection. That's very important. So when you select something, it will automatically rotate or orbit your view around that object. A lot easier. The other thing we want to do is go down here to Zoom to Mouse Position. That will, If we click that and select it and then click out of here, that will allow us, for example, if I want to zoom into this light, all I have to do is hover the mouse over it and then scroll my scroll wheel forward and back and it will zoom into that object. Same thing for the camera. I just hover my mouse over the, ca over the camera, scroll my scroll wheel, and that will zoom. So now we know we can rotate by selecting an object, pressing down the scroll wheel and moving your mouse around to rotate. We can also zoom. You don't even have to select the object. All you do to zoom in or out is to scroll your mouse wheel. And I'm scrolling forward to zoom in, scrolling back to zoom out. So we've, we've got rotate, we've got zoom. Now to move your camera or your view sideways and up and down, again, you use your middle mouse button, but first you press down your shift key on your keyboard, then press the middle mouse button and hold both down and you can see we are going back and forth. There's another way to do that moving, and that is to go over here with this hand. And you can see if I hover over, it says move the view. So you can basically do the same thing using that hand. Now, what we have done is we've just lost our objects. Very important thing to know how to get back to view those objects. One way to do it is to go up to view, Frame selected, and I've got my cube selected over here. Here's my list of objects, my camera, cube, and light. So I select, I want to frame my object. I want to zoom into my cube because I've lost it. So I go to view, frame selected, and there it goes. It brings you back right to your viewing your cube. And again, if I want to zoom out, I move, scroll my mouse wheel back, and we're back to where we were. If I want to move my view up, shift, middle mouse button, or I can use this to move up and down. So scroll to zoom in, use the hand here to what's called pan, and then middle mouse button, press it down to rotate. 
Now again, there are keyboard shortcuts. I encourage you to try not to use those right away. Later on, you're going to want to use keyboard shortcuts, but when you're learning, uh, if you're like me, I've got many, many, many different software applications, and there is no way I will remember keyboard shortcuts for all of them. So it's, it's better in the beginning if you use some of these simple uh, menu items. Now, the only real keyboard shortcuts I think you're going to need are the common one of Control-Z, which is undo. That's going to be very important if you do something. For example, if I move this object, oops, I didn't want to do that, hit Control-Z and it goes back. So that's very important, that Control-Z, but you're probably used to that. The next thing I want to talk about is using these gizmos to modify this object. These arrows allow you to move it on each of these axes. So I've got the blue to move it up. I've got the red to move it in this direction and the yellow to move it in this direction. Now I can also scale the object. So for example, if I want to scale it in this direction, I click on this cube, this yellow cube, and it will scale it. Same thing for the blue. If I want to scale it up and down, I do that. If I select this, we've also got this red circle, which will allow me to rotate. Same thing for rotating in this direction, and same thing for rotating, rotating in this direction. And then I can do Control Z, Z, Z to get back to where I was. Now, um, one thing we talked about in the previous video was the coordinate system. And we said it's an X, Y, Z coordinate system. Now, if you're confused about that, all you have to do is go up here to this little gizmo here. And what it's telling us is this blue axis, which we see here, is what Blender calls the z-axis. This yellow axis is the y-axis going along here. And the x-axis is this red axis, which means that the opposite is in, if you hover over this, you can see it's minus y, which is over here, and then minus z, which is down, and minus x, which is behind, okay? So when you enter your uh, dimensions of your object, you're going to have to be familiar with, and when you move around your object, you have to be familiar with these coordinates. But thankfully, they're right here. And if you want to know what the actual numbers are, as we said before, go up to this little arrow, click on it, and it will bring out this little menu, which is item. And make sure you're selecting the item. And it tells you the location, the rotation, the scale, and the dimensions, all right? So everything you need to know about this object. So let's look at the location. It's X minus 3.76, Y 5.9, and Z 23.221. So let's say I want to send that back to zero. One way I can do it is click on one of these and drag select all of them, and it allows you to enter one number that applies to all. So I'm going to hit zero and then enter, and you can see it has put the location of this, ob the center of this object back at zero. I've got rotation. You can see as I rotate, this updates up here. So it's rotating around the x-axis, which is this red axis, and I can click on that, put in zero to return it, the next thing is the scale, and this is very, very, very important. One of the strange things about Blender is, you noticed we changed the scale. So I've increased the scale on the y-axis here, and you can see the scale on the y is now, it's a scale of 9. What you want to do in Blender is always make sure that these x, y, and z scales are 1. I've got my object selected. And I'm going to go up to this right here, this object. I go down here to the Apply, and I want to hit Rotation and Scale. So all of these go back to 1. Now, this is one of the um, things about Blender, that you always want to make sure that those scales are at 1, because when you do other operations, like manipulating the object, they're going to assume that the scale is 1. And we'll talk about what all that means later, but make sure that you get into the habit of selecting the object that you've rotated or scaled, and go up here to Object, Apply, Rotation, and Scale. All right, always, always do that. That needs to be kind of in the back of your mind 
Whenever you modify an object, make sure you do that. Okay, now we are ready to start building our flashlight in Blender. And there's one really, really important concept you need to get in your mind when you're working on objects in Blender. For example, this if we're going to work on this cube, if we want to modify it, there's a very, very important concept, and guaranteed you're going to forget it. There are basically two modes that you can modify an object in Blender. Right now, we are in what's called object mode. And if you look up here, you can see object mode is selected. What that means is you manipulate this object as a complete object. And all you can do is you can move it, you can rotate it, and scale it. But you don't have access to the individual, what we saw in the first video, the individual vertices and the faces. All you can do is you can move it around and rotate it and maybe scale it, but you don't have any access to the individual components. So if we're going to build a flashlight, you can see we can't build it out of this cube because the flashlight is round and it's probably got a lot of vertices. So what we're going to have to do is go into a mode that allows us to add vertices and to move vertices so that they look more like a flashlight. So that mode is called edit mode. And to get into edit mode, you go up here, you go down to edit mode, and now you are in edit mode and you suddenly have all these tools. Most of them you can ignore them completely because you're not going to use them most of the time. But what these tools allow you to do is modify your geom what's called the geometry here, add vertices, move vertices, basically modify your object so it looks like what you want. And what's very, very important when you're in, in uh, edit mode, you realize that you have access to not only faces, which is these polygons here, these faces, you also have access to what we talked about before, the vertices. So you can see here at this corner, there's a ver vertex. I can left click and select it and I can move it. We've got the same gizmos, but now we can work on the vertices. And then I've got the third component of every object, which is the edges in the middle. So I can left click on this edge and I can modify that. This is what you're going to be working with in edit mode. You're going to be modifying the vertices, the edges, and the faces. And all of these tools, all they do is they allow you to add what's called geometry, add more vertices, more faces, more edges to whatever you've got so that you can make it look like what you want. And again, you're only going to need maybe three or four of these to do 90% of your work. Now, one other wonderful thing about Blender is uh, it gives you what's called this default cube when you start up. Now, what you can do is you can modify this cube to get what you want, but that may be like for our flashlight, since there's a lot of rounded edges on the flashlight, that's going to be a lot of work. So wouldn't it be nice if there was an object that they could start you out with that looked more like a flashlight? Well, thankfully they do. What you can do is you can add what are called primitive objects, and those are like cubes or spheres or cylinders or a number of different primitives that will start you out closer to where you want to be. However, that needs to be done in object mode, not edit mode. So I've got my my object here, and it's you can see over here it's selected the cube, so I am working in edit mode on that object. If I want to add another object, I have to get out of here because I'm working on this object now. So I have to get out of here. I have to go back to object mode, and I can add, for example, a cylinder. So let's go up here, add, and the first one is the most used one. You're going to use this a lot add mesh and we can go down to cylinder and you can see it added a cylinder but it's at the same location of this cube so what i can do is hit this yellow arrow move it out and there's the cylinder we added what we want to do is get rid of this cube because it doesn't look like a flashlight so we hit delete and we're going to select this now and you can see it's located, it's on the y-axis at 180.2 inches. We want to change that to zero. We want to put it back at the origin. And I can hit the 
view frame selected to move in. And right now I've got my what's closer to being a flashlight. So now what I can do is I can modify this object to look like a flashlight. So how would I do that? I think the number one most important and often most avoided thing about modeling in 3D is to really understand what, in our case, a flashlight looks like. Because we really don't have a good idea of what objects look like when we have to get down to the the level of explaining to Blender what does the flashlight actually look like, most of us really don't know. I mean, most people will say, well, yeah, flashlight, that's easy. I know what a flashlight looks like. Well, no, you don't. It's almost guaranteed that when you get down to the details, the things that really make a flashlight look like a flashlight, it's the details. It's the stuff that we don't think of. We say, oh, yeah, it's got that too, yeah. And for example, we've got the cylinder. The edges here are absolutely perfectly square edges. Nothing on the planet has perfectly square edges. But if we don't think about that, we're just going to say, oh, it's a cylinder and I make a, you know, put a light and we're done. No, absolutely not. The most important thing, and this is the same, you know, in the software development world, people just want to jump in and start writing code. And in 3D world, you just want to start modeling something. But really, I think the professionals and the knowledgeable people will step back and say, no, wait a minute. Let's figure out what we're going to do and let's design this and really understand the object we're going to model first so we can know all the details and the things that really make your the viewer's brain look at it and say, oh, yeah, that's really a flashlight. Or, you know, that doesn't look anything like a flashlight. It's like a, a fake version of a flashlight and the proportions are wrong and the surface looks weird. And it's really, really important that you understand what the object actually looks like. There's basically two ways to do that. One that I think is absolutely mandatory is that you get a photograph of the object. And you can, there's ways to put that in Blender in the background so you can look at the photograph and model your object with the photograph in the background. That to me is the absolute minimum. What I like to do is go the next step. If I can hold the object in my hand, that's what I prefer to do. I like to get the object and actually look at it and look at all the details and see that, um, you know, it's not what I thought it was. It's actually a little bit different. And there's scratches on the surface and, you know, the surfaces aren't really flat. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to get a flashlight and we are going to look at it in detail and we're going to understand what a flashlight really looks like. And we're going to convert that to data that we can put into Blender. We're going to get a ruler out. We're going to measure it. We're going to look at the surface. We're going to look at the light. And we're going to see if we can actually model that as something that a viewer would look at and say, ah, OK, that is a flashlight. So in the next video, we're going to look at a real life flashlight and we're going to compare it to this model we did. And we're going to see, is this a good model or does it fall short? Or is there, you know, something in your head says, well, that something's not right here. It's, is it too perfect or is it, um, is the surface wrong? What's the difference between this and a real life flashlight? So I encourage you, if you like any of these videos, please hit the like button and subscribe, hit the bell notifications. And most of all, let others know that we're here so we can get some more viewers. Otherwise, take care and have a really good day. Thanks.